Now we're ready to test our symbol the FFT block to make sure that it works as advertised. And uh, this one's especially crucial because as you hopefully saw in the last video in the CNX module, um, it's not exactly intuitive and there's quite a few things going on here. So we want to make sure that it at least produces a, a uh, reasonable output. Um, and of course, more rigorous testing will be when we actually place it in the entire chain, uh, put an OFDM symbol in and hopefully get an OFDM symbol out. Uh, and all the data recovered. Now to do this again just find our sub VI, place it in, and then add all the inputs and outputs and um, because we're going to have in general a complex time domain signal we need to perform the complex to real and imaginary function and look at the time domain real and the time domain imaginary output. So with that let's go ahead and look at a small example that I've set up here and again I've used kind of piggybacking off our previous examples we have our parallel symbol in that we discovered last time when we did the word to symbol conversion um, and then I've chosen a couple values here a D to A rate of 1000 or 1 kilohertz four subcarriers as before and this is our four parallel symbol in and then a carrier symbol of 100 and a fundamental frequency of 1 uh, it's important to note, if we didn't stress it enough last time, that because there's no safeguards in this built into this function, that it's uh, you have to be very careful when choosing your D to A rate and your fundamental frequency. Um, you should choose it such that the half the D to A rate is divisible uh, by the fundamental frequency evenly, uh, or that it's an integer multiple of the other, and that way we can effectively place one symbol at each OFDM bin uh, without having to worry about the relationship to the DA rate and in addition uh, you need to make sure that you don't have so many subcarriers with a high fundamental frequency such that you you basically um, have aliasing um, because you have too many sub too much bandwidth for a low DA rate um, and it won't actually result in aliasing but it will result in and an improper representation of your signal and you won't get the results you'd like. So let's go ahead and, and run the function here and make sure that it works. And it looks like it did. Um, these are pretty simple waveforms but they are indeed OFDM time domain signals. So what we would do uh, next is take the the real part here and modulate it with the cosine of our uh, intermediate frequency carrier and then take the imaginary part and multiply it by sine and then we have our quadrature uh, intermediate frequency signal that was ready to send over the air uh, through a physical medium. And we can see here uh, our DC offset has popped out with the appropriate amplitude and so that worked as well. So if you have any other questions or if any of this is confusing I encourage you to check out the CNX module or email the author.